It's a new dawn, it's a new day for playing with this. Now, have a look. That's as far as I got last night before I decided to call it quits. Buttons still working nicely. Mm -mm -mm. Knobs all in place. So, next step for me. Again, remember, this is me with no forward planning at all, just working ad hoc as I go along. I think I'm going to hold the pan well like that, just like that. And then I'm going to see what options exist for me for mounting. So we had a little play with this already, so I've put my little cable tie on it. And it is actually connected to a monitor. So a lot. To, it just goes to show you, you've got VJ wire here. There's a lot of um, tension on a VJ wire because they're so thick. So I don't know if you can get a skinny VJ wire. could look out for one if you have. And something I found when I had bought one of the uh, BBC Master refurb kits. If we're lucky. Mm -hmm. We've got these cable strain relief grommets, but I think this might be just that little bit too small. I mean, if you've seen these, they're really quite good. Um, you basically drill a hole or have a, you know, you can cut them into the edge of something and then you put the mains lead through that and then push the whole thing in and it locks in. So it might be possible to find something a little, well, it's definitely possible to find a fatter one for this wire. Whether or not I've got one, that's another question. But I think that kind of thing will do good anyway. So even if I just punch a hole in the back panel for now. So all I need to do is just really work out how to fix this. So you need some sort of standoff. So I'm going to have a route around, see if there's anything as well I can use as standoffs. And then it's a case of actually starting to do the wiring up. Fortunately, a lot of these things will have a common ground. So for audio, it'd be totally separate circuits. So you don't want it, that to mess with that. So none of these grounds mess with this ground. However, the signal ground from the video is actually also the uh, electrical ground for the whole board. So that's pretty cool too. So that's gonna save a lot of effort. And then we've got quite a lot of space here for our audio amplifier, which we can hot snot in there. And then the only bit that's gonna be real tricky, and I haven't even got them out, you can see is speakers. So I really intended to have speakers fit this but I might just end up with a port you know like a, an external jack that you can plug in so you can just ha have some external speakers but you use the amplifier and everything in here I don't know or we just make a headphone socket and then you could either use the headphone socket to, it's gonna be pretty hot though to drive it for headphones you gotta be careful as well remember some jammer boards actually output a speaker level as well as a line level so be bloody careful with that and uh, I was speaking to Electron Ash and he sort of suggested maybe having some resistors in line to limit the current here just in case you accidentally hit that. So let me find more hardware and then we will continue with the build. So I found some of these plastic doodads there. You can see those standoffs. They were just in a box of random stuff. So I've mixed some sort of two minute resin here. And I'm just gonna put a blob on each of these little feet. And that should be good to go. I did find some metal screw in type standoffs, but they looked so tiny. They weren't quite right for this job. Let me just make sure I got this right ray right round. And that's it. I shall leave it there. We'll come back and that will be good. I'm almost tempted while I've got the resin out there to put some on this, but let's just leave it. That's not too much to waste. By the way, as a quick tip, if you've got resin on your spatula, which you will have, if you want to reuse that spatula, scoop up all your remaining resin. So it's a big blob like that, basically. And then when that hardens, you'll be able to peel that off.
So onto the back plate, I've just drilled one hole and another hole with a cut in it. And the reason is this hole is going to be the DC jack there. And I'm going to just glue that on there and that should be no problem. And this is the one for the VGA cable. I'm hoping I can kind of squeeze it in there. So it might take a bit of finagling and I've got to be a bit careful. I don't want to damage the cable too much, but I'm going to squeeze it in there and put a um, cable tie. So it will just be basically strain relief there. Let's try, shall we? I don't want to break the plastic. I think I'm going to have to open it out a little bit more though. It's a bit too tight still. So I've got some glue waiting to set on the back panel and I thought while I'll do that I'll start persevering and getting on with the uh, rest of the gubbins on the front panel. So just to show you what I've done here, I've kind of, uh, I thought I'd uh, add an LED but then use this bit of veriboard we had here actually as a base for our circuitry. So you can see I've soldered uh, the ground leg of the LED to this fat track on the bottom so I've decided that's going to be effectively our ground plane. And then here I've got another power rail uh, which is going to be on one side of this resistor so that's the LED uh, you know resist voltage power regulated down for the LED. So this line here is going to be our 5 volt line right here where the blade is. And then you can see I've taken that ground and jumped it over to our four switches. So these three switches are connected. You can see their ground, that ground, that ground's connected. So these are the three and the diamond pattern on the other side. And I've got a little wire coming over. Remember underneath here, there's a cut in this PCB and I'm bringing the ground up to there. So that means to connect to that switch, we're gonna put a wire from here, 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 and where's the other one? Here, this track here to our, our circuit board. So moving on, so we've got the ground here. We know that we're going to need this negative to come over to this amplifier chip there. So we're going to put that on the minus there. We're going to have a plus that will come from here and go over to there. So that's nicely done. I think I might wrap these around the top though, just in case I want to swap out this module. So I'm going to wrap the power probably around the top to here. And that way I can keep all of the actual audio connections just on this side basically coming and jumping over the front of them. And these are our potentiometers. Remember, all of the grounds on these signals are all connected to power ground. So effectively, this negative will connect to here because this is our grounding pin. Remember the black one? And then this will also go to here, 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 and here. And you can see I've already attached a piece of Kynar. What I would normally do is do something like solder wires to wires to wires, but someone told me, really, apparently if you get Kynar, if you persevere with it, you will melt through the insulation. So I'm going to try to make a kind of bus bar by just sort of wrapping around like that. Let's see if that works. I'm going to do that right now. This is sort of a first for me, so it might not work. Let me just move our uh, unit out of the way before I pull that off the table. And let's just zoom out a bit so we can fit that all in. So I'm going to take my tweezers and I'm going to effectively just wrap this around. And I was looking around just to see what could I use to make a bus bar out of and I didn't have anything. So wires is the way to go. And I thought because it's the sort of fiddly one, let's get it out of the way first because it looks like it's going to be a pain. So I'm just doing a loop. I'm going to tighten that loop. It's almost like being a surgeon, isn't it, this? Doing some stitches. And I remember back in the day, there used to be a sort of wire wrapping systems really for making circuit boards. You kind of would just run around circuit boards, literally um, wrapping wires around components and soldering. Actually, I think look, it's all messing up. What I'll do is let's just do it one at a time. So that's our first one. Let's keep it in line there. It's amazing this stuff, how fiddly it is when you don't want it to be. But we're going to keep that there. It's not very pretty, is it? But, uh, that's why we put stuff in boxes though, don't we? Just so we can hide all of our sort of bodgery. I mean, this is effectively like a prototype build really. So I'm just applying solder, let's see. Yeah, I don't think the insulation looks like it wants to go, to be honest with you. No, maybe. One last bit of solder and let's just leave it see if it has actually taken. The weird thing is because the solder's melted you can't really tell if it's actually... See the solder there is still pretty uh, soft. Let that cool down. And then what we'll do is we'll just do a continuity test from here to here and if that's worked then great. We'll just 
run along with it and do it over the rest. So that has now cooled. I'm not totally convinced in it as a technique. Mm, it has worked. Yep. Okay, fine. Ever onwards. Let's just do one more, shall we? I say let's do one more. I'm going to do all of them. But I mean, let's do one more together before I turn off the camera and start swearing. So this is a tricky one if you want to get it pretty though, isn't it? I mean, you're going to have all these different lengths. I mean, you suppose you could just bend it all nicely afterwards so it looks pretty. I mean, it's pretty enough. Should I... S and then... Let's Maybe you want to just rub it with the tip. Yeah, that worked quite well. I could see that there. I was rubbing it with the tip of the soldering iron first. Ah, that'll do. So I rubbed it with the tip of the soldering iron first. That seemed to abrade the insulation off before I supplied solder. That's good. It'll probably stop it infecting your solder. Oh, we're almost there now. If you don't have tweezers though, don't bother with this. Just do what you need to do. You know, cut some wire, make a PCB, whatever whatever you, uh, whatever technologies you're most privy to, just go ahead and just do it that way. And remember, these signal wires, you don't need much current. They're not handling too much current, so at least you don't need thick wire. Again, I'm just I'm tapping that with the tip of the solder line because I want to damage the insulation. I want that insulation to break, which it looks like it has. So mm, good. So this one has to go via here and then via here. So that's a going to be a tricky one. This one's like a big solder pot here. You see, it's, you fill that with solder. But I'm going to I'm going to have a go with the same trick. I'm going to do a loop. I might do two loops actually. Let's see if we can get two loops on. And we can, and we have. So that's two loops pulled tight. I'm going to zoom in on that one because that one's a trickier one to see. And uh, remember, I do use the uh, camera as a little bit of a microscope for my my poor old eyes. Let's see if we can just. You don't need much, you see. You only need an edge. So I'm going to hold it there just to break the insulation. I'm just going to add a tap of this. A bit more. Let's see if that cools down, because just really you don't need anything. If you think of a, a PCB, yeah, that, that actually has got it. It's almost like just a surface mount, it's just a touch of it, but I'm going to give it a bit more. Let's get it. Um, I want to make sure mechanically it's good. All right, that's not going to go anywhere now. Good, so we're almost there. So we just have our minus here and then our ground roll. Actually, we know we'll need someone here too. Hmm. Let me have a little think about this circuit wise before I run ahead. I want to make sure I get everything in one wrap. But there you go, that's certainly the technique. See you back here in a moment. So you can see I've finished with our kynaring. So I've kynar, 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 kynar. So I've taken it to the center tap here of this phono, and that goes to the negative of our amp, which then goes to this negative bus bar, which continues to this negative wire, which we're gonna hook up to the ground on the board. And then we've got a plus five bit of kynar that also runs parallel to this, to this rail here which then continues on to the positive. So that will provide power to the amplifier and power to our LED via this resistor. So be careful where you put these on the board though. You don't want to put them onto the power in to the whole device because you want to put it after the regulated because you're not sure the uh, technical spec for the unit could be five to 12 volts and someone in the outside world might plug in 12 volts and ignore your six volt power supply and that's gonna take out your LED and your amp. So make sure you connect your red bit to the regulator. Now I find the uh, this mess of resistors that I was doing some sort of experiment with and it gave me an idea when I was looking at this because of the way all of these parts align. I've still got to basically solder the 
potentiometers to the signals coming in from the video sources. And what I thought would be cute, a cute way of doing it, is again, we might uh, do our little bus bar concept and just go from here to here if it makes sense. And uh, the reason the resistors are, are applicable because it's just basically a bunch of um, handy wires in something that I'm probably not going to want to reuse. You never really clean resistors up and put them back in the box at that when they look like that. So uh, yeah, I think I can do that without shorting it. Um, so that's pretty cool. So what I'm going to do then probably for each one, I'll just do a couple here so you can see the, the little trick before I get crack on. We know that we're not going to solder the ring terminals on these. We're going to leave them all floating, all the ring terminals on all of the video things will be floating. So we're just going to make sure that we don't really touch that with our wire. So if, you, if you're really not sure, you could use um, a bit of heat shrink. In fact, do I, I have heat shrink? I could do that. I wasn't going to bother, but you can see it's going to take a bit of heat in there. Don't hang around too long, though. You don't want to melt any of the uh, plastic of this fitting, but it does take some heat to get going with these. So we have that resistor leg there. So what I'm going to do is just basically chop the resistor off. And I should just buy some correct gauge wire for doing this, but I just never got around to it. So you can see there's the wire. So you've got an option, just bend it over and leave it exposed. Um, oh, you know, for me, that's what I would do, right? Right away, I would just do it. I don't care. I know I'm never going to go in there and touch that. I know it's not going to short, but okay, let's pretend you're doing it and you do care about such things. So here's a bit of nice yellow heat shrink and we're not really going to use it for its shrinking ability but you can see there let's just cut a bit off we'll just put that on like so you've got a bit there left on the tip and we're just going to bend that down in whatever way you like to be honest with you there's the terminal you're just trying to solder it to you can just either just push it down I, I, I'm just going to push it down I'm going to add a slight bend to it so it's just meeting the same angle when it's flat and there you go, see, perfect. So just touch that. Jobs a good one. And if you're really keen, you could sort of shrink that up. And you can see it's already started to shrink on the end from the heat. Um, now you could use hot air, and I just want to show you this. If you don't have hot air, and you have a lighter, it's not really a great way of doing it, but look, you can see it does do it, right? And just to show you from the other angle, focus please. No, nope, doesn't want to focus, but there you go. So you're not touching anything off that. And you've got no chance now, actually, if you, uh, you know, push that in, it's not going to short either. So I'm just going to persevere and do the rest of these. I got 50 Bentleys in the West Indies. It doesn't matter. Because if you ain't sharing, people ain't caring. Come up in the hood, they take everything you're wearing. Yeah, that one, that that other one, and that other one. Take me home to the place I belong in the refugee camp. Oh yeah. That's some good stuff right there. We're just about at the point where things need to start to go in the box. Now I noticed something interesting. One, I haven't uh, allowed a massive wire to my amplifier from the 5 volt rail or the ground. It's all down this little teeny pieces of kynar, but I think for our purposes it's going to be more than adequate. And I actually have wired up some of the back panels. So I just want to show you that because this is kind of a fixed wire between these two. I didn't have any connectors. First thing is, is the DC jack. So I've basically just glued on a DC jack with fast setting resin. And that's going to connect to the board using the pin header here. And then I've got this rather complicated looking setup. So you've got the amp and you've got the output from the amp here going down this wire. And just to cut a long story short, you've got a headphone switch here, which is optional. So it's going to either go to the headphone switch or you're going to switch it and it will switch to the mono internal speaker. So that's what that's doing. 
That's just to give you a, the ability to plug an external, I say headphones, it's probably going to be way too high a level for headphones. It's more for external speakers, really. And that's what that is. And there's a whole mess of wires to do that. I haven't done a great job there because I'm not quite sure if I'm happy with how this is going to pan out. I think it's going to be more than adequate. I don't think I'm ever going to use this, frankly. It just always be on the internal speaker. But I was kind of thinking, well, maybe I'll have it on a, when you plug in the jack, it could do away with the switch, you know, with the switching headphone socket. But, yeah, you know, it's fine. It's all going to fit in the box anyway, so who cares? Um, so that is actually pretty much ready to go now. So if we just get the box, this is where we got to last time. I'm going to, I'm not going to flip that one right in yet because we have some soldering still to do to that. So I'm just going to clear, clear the deck a bit. And then we've got our back panel. So if you see the back panel should be easy enough done. And that can go in like so. And it's a little bit, there's a little bit of play there. It's a bit tight. Got to bend some stuff just to make that fit a bit better. But we'll sort that out in a moment. Um, but the main things are, of course, though, the wiring here. So we do have this cable that came with the device, and that actually contains red, green, blue, and then our sink, which is what we need. There is a, another kind of horizontal sink. That's that yellow wire, but we're not using that in our design, so we might chop that off. And then there is a ground, and that's a common signal ground. So you're saying, well, if you've got a common signal ground, why do you need this one? Well, I'm going to double up, to be honest with you. I'm going to double up the ground. You've got to be careful. I don't think it's going to cause a weird antenna, but I want it to be a bit beefier than just the one that's on this because we have the amp. We've got a lot of star other stuff going on. We've got our LED. So I don't think there's any harm there. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to tr basically trim these all down and then we're going to solder them. No more beating about the bush. Let's get soldering. So we have these ones here. I'm going to start from the right to left, I think. So I've got red. Boom. Green. Boom. Blue. Boom. Stink. Boom. A boom. And then our ground, which is going to go on that one. So it's not quite as handy dandy as the others. But he'll, he'll get on there. He'll be okay. Needs a bit more heaty heat. It's good. Right, so that's all the connections. You gotta make sure you're connected. So that's the connections there. Put that there. So we can actually just put the panel in. <laughs> Come back here. The red wire was just underneath the panel as well. It wasn't locking in. Engaged. Make it show number one, and you can decide how you're gonna keep all these wires nice and neat. I'm just going to let them float. I'm just going to let them float. So I'm going to go with the power thing. And uh, I might... Uh, remember I did say about the power to uh, be a bit careful with it in that you'd want to make sure that you hook it up. There's no 5 volts on this board. There's only a 3V3, which isn't enough for my amp. So I'm going to break my own rules and I'm going to solder this, this guy into the uh, power rails directly. But there is something I want to show you before we do that that is important. And that's because I haven't actually done any wires yet from our up, down, left, right. So bum, let's do that. And then we'll finish this off. Oh dear. Dee 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 dee. So, we've got our colours here, and we've got our red and black. So this is the power, by the way, the red and black. I've decided to tap it on that side of the diode. Let me put these out of the way. We're not interested in those right now. It's just to our LED. Just push them out of the way. 
Chapman wishing it was ever so slightly longer. There you go. So this black wire is our top, which is up. So just to show you our board, if you remember, our up. I'm going to show you where you want to tackle these things. And I'm just going to trim the ends a little bit as I do this because they're a bit long. In fact, I think we'll start with the down. The reason being the down is underneath everything else. So if we uh, leave it to the end, we're going to have trouble. So you can see the trace coming to the down terminal here. It's up to you. If, if, if it's clear, you could try pushing it through the hole like that, and that'll be good. So we've got our right, which is this one, which would be right would be normally here. So look at the tracking. We've got this, these two actually. You've got two you can choose. That will be fine. That's our right. And I've got yellow as left, which will come to here. And then we have an up, which I've conveniently got as black, just to be confusing. So let's have a look at everything else. Give it a panel. Give it a little shake. Uh -huh. Probably didn't want all of these to be like that, so let's move that under there. Right mess it's a mess Andrew you've done a mess right first things first is to clip our power well I say our power it's our VGA wire it's so chunky I'm considering it like as if it's a power wire on this so you want to get some strain relief on that and to that end I've got this big cable clip I mean it's a massive cable tie and I'm gonna put it I'm gonna give it about five mil extra of slack yeah so that's that's there like that and cut that there I'll pop that in get in there yeah, sitting absolutely nicely a little bit of tension that's fine then we've got our power jack which we're going to pop in like so we've got two speaker wires which we need to hook up so fortunately we don't have everything on connectors. In fact, we've got very few things on connectors, but for me, it's not a problem because I know that one, it's very unlikely we're gonna be digging around in here that often. And two, and even if we are, it's just a solder. We got solder nines. We're not worried about that sort of thing. So what you could do with wires like this, you could do a little loop, tie them off, do little loops and tie them off and you could just mount it all nicely. But for me for now that's fine so we've got our power lead so do we dare do we dare apply some power to this bad boy and if we do does our led come on that'll be our first sign of life ready steady Ooh, it did come on there's our green led and you can see on board there's a nice led shining right there and i've got a monitor to the side of me which i'm also gonna power on because why not I'm just going to make sure it's uh, more or less functional before I pop the lid on. But you know what? We could just pop the lid on, couldn't we? Now, this is something that always is a gotcha for me. I always get confused which way around these go, and I get them wrong all the time. I think it's that way, but I could be wrong. And I can see on the screen it does say no signal, which is cool. And the menu buttons do seem to be functioning. Hooray. Good. So far, so good. I think I'm going to put the case on and then experiment a bit more. So here we have it, the finished beast ready for testing. I've already hooked up the audio. That works just great. And uh, because of the cables I bought, there's only enough for a mono audio. But to be honest with you, that's pretty much uh, okay for now. Something I noticed I wired the audio in. <laughs> it's the wrong way around. So that goes quiet and that goes loud. So I might swap those around at some point. But to be honest it's not too important right now as long as you have the adjustment. The buttons work great. Um, this stand thing is pretty damn cool. You actually pull these things out to unlock it and then you can slide it backwards and forwards as per needed. But 
I have to say it's a very nice little substantial piece of kit it's uh, already working out quite nicely so that's the front and then on the back of course you've got the cables and then you've got the audio out with the switch so so far so good now I did try to test this with my Sony hip and it wasn't working quite right and it was working weirdly the same way it did with the Atari ST and that's because you need a sync stripper so that is an additional piece of hardware I probably need to build in a little box that will go between this wire and there and it'll actually need power so I might put a little power jack here so it's just like a little adapter to clean up certain types of video or maybe I could build it inside I've got to decide really um, and I do have next to me here, you can see the edge of it, a uh, arcade board. But the problem is I don't have an arcade worthy power supply because my bench supply is only capable of two amps and this thing is maxing it out. So I'm kind of like uh, stuck between a rock and a hard place for testing. But I think that's a good time to call it a day. Um, just a note on the cables, I basically cut off the SCART lead. I put a little bit of heat shrink here, buzzed out all the appropriate pairs and then took them out to the right color connections. The only ones that are slightly different are the audio because I didn't have any particular colors for audio. So I just used a different kind of test clip. So, you know, video, audio, nicely, easily separable. But yeah, I think this is a, a glorious piece of kit ready for lots of testing and fun and games. Whether or not uh, it needs adjustment on all these pots and things, we'll wait to see. I suspect we will need need them, especially the sink, because that one didn't have a pot at all. So we don't know how that's going to want to play games. But to be honest, even if you didn't have the adjustment pots and you wanted to put your GBS into a nice case, I think you could still do this project, you know, because it's just it makes it better than just those bloody PCBs knocking around. Anyway, let's uh, save that for another time. As ever, thank you for watching.